They say there's good and bad in everything in life. Today we're going to look at the good and bad in one of my favourite things in my life. Corner here, welcome back once again. And if you saw my last video, you will have been introduced to my brilliant little first car, my 2002 Fiat Sargento Sporting, which I got extremely enthusiastic about. So it just looks cool, you know. Awesome, I think, in here is, is the word. It is just amazing. It's so much fun, this car. And that's what I'm doing in this car. I'm having fun. I love this thing. Woohoo! And there's good reason for that enthusiasm. I love that little car to bits. And to prove it, I wanted to kind of justify it in this video where I show you five things that I love about my Fiat. But so that I don't appear over enthusiastic, I thought I'd also show you five things that I don't like about it. Not necessarily things that I hate, but just things that I don't like. Starting off our bad things list is at number five, the rear legroom. Now it's such a small car, because it is very small, you can understand that it's not going to have a huge amount of room in the back but it still feels like a bit of a squeeze in there. I'm quite tall, I'm about six foot one, and there is no room there to sit, to speak of. Basically, if your friends have got legs, I wouldn't put them in the back of this car. And um, similarly, if your passenger's got legs, then I'll get in the back either. You can kind of adjust it, you can get a bit of adjustability there, but because of the way the dashboard comes out, you're still not gonna be getting particularly tall people in the front and the back of this car, if I'm completely honest with you. Yeah, it's just not the most spacious car in the world, and unlike a Mini, it just doesn't feel like you could actually fit four people in there in a squeeze, unless they were reasonably short. That said, the small size does make up for this, as we'll come back to you later. At number five on the love list is how uncommon they are. These are not a frequent sight like a Ford Fiesta, a Vauxhall Corsa or VW Polo are. You don't see many Seicentos, and particularly you don't see many Seicento Sportings around. In fact, on my travels in mine, I've only ever seen Three, they are quite a rare car to find. Not as rare as the predecessor, the Cinquecento Sporting, but still a really rare sight. So I have to say, it's nice to not blend in with the crowd and have something a little bit different, and you stand out as being different and interesting, like you just don't if you have a Corsa or a Polo. Number four on the bad things list is something quite minor, but it's worth mentioning anyway. I said earlier that it was a small car and that impact on the rear legroom. But of course, being a small car with four seats, I use the term four seats quite generously, it's not got the biggest boot in the world either. In fact, it is a ridiculously small boot, enough for three or four shopping bags. That's not too bad, it's a small car, you can get over it. But the stock factory parcel shelf also has speakers in it. And because they're quite thick speakers, for better sound quality obviously, they intrude into the boot space. So if you start stacking things in the boot, you're very quickly going to run out of boot space. With a car so small, complaining about the boot space is something that's kind of pointless anyway, but it's definitely worth mentioning because it's just not as big as the boots of cars that are just slightly larger. And certainly, with those speakers intruding into it, you're not gonna get an awful lot of stuff in there. Number four on the love list is the way it looks. I said in the reveal video about how the Sporting looks a lot better than the standard car. This is spot on, and just taking the profile, it looks it looks kind of more, it looks more aggressive, and it looks cool, and it looks hot hatchy, which is what I like. It takes a standard car that's a little bit plain Jane, and makes it cooler. You end up with a car that could have like something a pharmacist would drive, but now it looks like a proper bona fide hot hatch. And I'll stand by that, with its cool body kit kind of making it a little more aggressive, those awesome little wheels, and of course, the side skirt and spoiler that you can have on certain models, it just looks a lot tougher than the standard version, which looks comparatively wimpy. And every time I walk past it, with the bright yellow paint and that awesome body kit and everything else, it just looks cool and it makes me smile. Number three on the hate list is something to do with the ergonomics of the interior, specifically these. The electric window switches are down here. I'm not complaining about electric windows, that's a very good thing to have. But normally you get them over here, you get them kind of on the door cards, and that means you can be driving along and you can push it and it's fine, you know, you can do it while driving along, don't take your eyes off the road. Because they're down here, you're driving along and you kind of have to swap blindly and you can end up changing the, 
the vents or opening the radio up and changing onto radio one and no one wants to do that. Yeah, it's not the best electric window switch placement in the world, but on the plus side, it does have them. Even the basic models come with electric windows, so you can't complain too much. And I can see why they did it for ease of left-hand drive to right-hand drive conversions, not having to move them between the door cards. But come on, Fiat, a better positioning would have been quite easy to do. Number three on the love list is the fuel economy, and it's a big one for me, considering that I'm doing around 90 to 100 miles a week back and forth to college. I'm getting 50 miles to the gallon on a regular basis. That's not a kind of I might, I might not. I am guaranteed to get nearly 50 miles to the gallon, if not more, depending on how I'm driving and where I'm driving. That's amazing. There's a lot of cars that are lucky to touch 40 miles to the gallon, and frankly, it's brilliant. It just makes this car even better. Yep, that is definitely a big difference for me. When I know that I can put about 10 pounds worth of petrol in and I can get about 100 miles on it, that makes a big difference, especially considering that I travel so many miles to and from college every week. At number two on the hate list is one of the biggest problems I have with this car, and it's not the car's fault. It's other people's fault, unfortunately. For those of you unfamiliar with the UK sitcom The Inbetweeners that aired a few years back, I'll run you through it quickly. Basically, it's a TV show about a bunch of really awkward schoolboys, and one of them happens to drive a yellow Fiat Cinquecento, the predecessor to my car, and it isn't even the exact same model. He has a basic Cinquecento, and I have a top of the range in Seicento. However, because the cars look vaguely similar, my case is yellow, and they're both made by Fiat, people seem to have made a strong connection, and unfortunately, the in-betweeners jokes are quite frequent. Bus However, if you're big enough to rise above these comments and just get behind the wheel and enjoy the brilliant drive of the car, they're just not an issue. At number two on the love list is the size of it. I've complained previously about how the size means that you haven't got much rear legroom and you haven't got much boot space, but there are advantages to having such a small car. It's a really, really small car. You'll know it's got a really small footprint and that means it's more manoeuvrable. It means you can park it easier, you can get around roundabouts quicker, you can nip in between gaps. As a city car, you want it to be as small as possible and it's serves that purpose very, very well indeed. Exactly, it means there's almost any situation where the car can fit. It will fit in narrow gaps, small spaces, it will go around roundabouts and not stray into the other lane. It's easy to park, it's easy to see out of. It's just a perfect city car in that it is as small and as nimble as it can possibly be thanks to its small size and lightweight. And number one on the hate list kind of stems from my previous point. Again, that it's not really the car's fault, but it's definitely worth mentioning because it's a reason that some people just don't like the car, and it's people not taking it seriously. Because it hasn't got a massive engine, it hasn't got heaps of power, and there's the fact that it is very small, people find it very easy to take the mickey out of the car. They don't take it seriously, they don't love it like I do. And it's fair enough, I get that some of these cars, like mine, it's one of those things you don't knock it till you've tried it, you experience it, and then you go and tell others quite how brilliant it really is. But what I don't get is, it's got the same kind of characteristics as a Mini. It's lightweight, it's got the wheels in each corner, it looks cool, it's fun to drive, it doesn't use much fuel, it's tiny. Why don't people love them as much as they love Minis? I cannot work it out. Because people will love Minis having never even driven one or been in one in their whole life. And yet until someone gets in and experiences a Seicento or a Cinquecento, they just don't love it like I do. If you get the opportunity to ride in a Seicento or a Cinquecento or even drive one, do it. You will not regret it. My number one point on the good list, and that is the fact it is fun amazingly fun. Because it handles so well, it steers so brilliantly, it's so good in the corners, it's light, it's chuckable, it's got its personality. It is such a fun car. It's lovable, it's brilliant. It's got a big personality, it's happy, it's exciting, it will make the smallest little drive a big event that will put a massive smile on your face. The joy of this car is not the straight, it's the bits in between. The corners where you can chuck it in, it grips on, does that classic Fiat thing. Keep it in there, keep it in, have more fun. And that's what I'm doing in this car, I'm having fun. But because I haven't got much power, I'm not going very fast. So I'm having fun, but I'm staying legal, I'm staying within the speed limit. It's brilliant, it's so much fun. And that is my favorite feature about this car. That's why I went on about it in the reveal video. It is fantastic fun to drive. If you haven't driven one of these cars, you need to go and do it. They are amazing fun, they put a smile on your face, they are absolutely brilliant. So there you have it, there's five things I love and five things I hate about my Fiat Seicento Sporting. And I want to make it plain, the five things I love, I really love about the car, and the five things I hate, 
I don't really hate about it. I'll be honest with you, it took me a good 10 minutes to actually make the list. But I did it eventually. And two of them aren't even the car's fault, and the rest of them are relatively minor anyway. But they're worth mentioning because it's important that if you can see the good and the bad in everything, you end up appreciating the good even more. And I certainly appreciate my Fiat a hell of a lot. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I really, really appreciate it. If you liked it, don't forget to do that thing. If you didn't like it, do that thing. But whatever you do, don't forget to do that thing. Type down below. I want to know five things you love and five things that you hate about your car. What are the things that you love about it? What are the things that make you smile when you see it? What makes you want to go for a drive? And what makes you wish you'd taken the bus? Ugh. For those of you fancying some more of Miller Corner, don't forget to click the subscribe button, which is God only knows where YouTubers put it these days, to see exactly when I release new videos. You can follow me on Instagram at Miller Corner, and if you head over to Twitter, you can follow me at Miller underscore Corner, where you can get an update on when new videos are coming out, when I'm working on videos, and you can have a say in the videos I produce in the future. Thanks once again so much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to click that subscribe button for more videos from me in your YouTube inbox, and I will catch you in the next one, guys. Have a good one. The 1970s Beetle has that much. There's some background noise, so I'm going to do that bit again. You throw in the body kit. You throw it in a... Put it there. I've lost my train of thought. I don't know where I'm going with this. And what you've got is a car that's gone from something your dentist would... You no, know, not a dentist. A dentist don't drive Fiat's. They might. Mine does. Oh my God, every noise ever, right? <laughs> because you've got really responsive steering, it's more manoeuvrable and our old friends the Seagulls have come back, so I'm going to do that bit again. Don't know. Camera can quite make out the reversing vehicle over there, but it's reversing and it's a vehicle. The thing is, though, hurry up and be done reversing. Now that's a fire engine. That is a fire engine. Dude, get up! Shut up! I'm trying to show off my mad car. I don't want to show off their mad van. Yeah, it's got a mad van, apparently. Well, it's not. It's a. It's, it's an ambulance. It's a. It's a siren. I mean, the rest of the vehicle is probably there too. Might want to move those biscuits. They're after to get some fool in a polo who's crashed. You can follow me on Instagram at Miller underscore corner. No, you can't because that's not my Instagram handle.